your girl Rizzo, where every week me and a few of my friends get together to watch, recap, and review HBO's hit series Insecure. This week, you're in for a treat. Let's get to it. Up first, we got my guy, the world-renowned filmmaker, one half of JDMP, the guy who once weighed less than my three-year-old nephew. Welcome, the newlywed, JD. Peace, 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 peace. <laughs> peace, peace, what up? I'm, I'm so glad you put on your weight. Thank you so much. Stop it, stop it, stop it. That was a long time ago. We're shaking. Up next, we've got my prep for life. The yes, of course I'm Dominican and went to my hall. But yes, I also graduated from Wharton. The hardest guy to get in contact with and the reason I wear a seatbelt. My guy, Kenny. What's up? What up, what up, what up, what up? Come on, we went first of all. Kenny started the shirt crew. Thank God that we're all home because I had to change because I was not woke and I'm not gonna have y'all talking about me. So big up to Kenny for that. Guys, this is an exciting episode for us. This is our first all male guest episode. Y'all guys excited to be here? Oh my God, God. ecstatic, oh. ecstatic. Excuse me. And also, do we see the guys came with their drinks, y'all, right? This is clearly a very different, this is the cool, calm, chill side of things. Let's get into this episode. As we expected with this week's episode, this week focused solely on Molly and her life without Issa, or so it should have. Last week's episode that solely focused on Issa only had a sprinkle of Molly in it really at the end of the episode. Whereas this week, Issa was all up and down and throughout this episode. We heard her voice. Molly referenced her not once, but twice. Molly had to speak with her therapist about finding out ways to get through and get past her. And many would argue, we don't have to get into this, Many would argue that Issa was all up and down through Molly's subconscious as she asserted herself throughout many of the activities and many of the things that happened this episode. So it's clear that Molly has trouble getting over Issa, whether she's there or she's not, which is also interesting because the blamer, the one that everyone blames for things, Molly, is the one that's having the most trouble ridding her life of Issa. So guys, because I love to talk to men about feelings, tell me what advice you would give to a Molly-like character in your life. What advice would you give someone like Molly? She's over 30. She has to let that shit go. Like, I, I don't I don't quite understand it, to be honest with you, right? Like... Y'all, this is about to be a whole different episode. Nah, nah I'm being honest. You know, I, I don't I don't quite understand the, the, the dynamic of... Um, female friends after a certain age because it is it is more than friendship right like so right. for as a man I don't have that perspective of like getting over an issue with a friend so from the outside in it just doesn't resonate so and I just don't quite understand why she just won't say anything and testing the friendship is really really tough right so you say to yourself like man if I really go there with this person it may be the end, and that could be in the back of her mind why it's just passive aggressive and not aggressive aggressive. Like, yo, I don't like the way you're moving. Uh, let's have a conversation. So for me, I think she just needs to get over herself and have a conversation. Because sometimes after a certain age, you just have to decide, like, I can live with this person. Uh, I mean, sorry, I can live without this person, right? And you have to just put that to the test. And if it's worth it, um, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll resolve itself. But I just kind of don't understand seven episodes of passive aggression and not wanting to say anything over a friend who didn't really wrong you, mm. right? She didn't really wrong her, right? So, uh, you know, for me, it's, uh, I don't quite understand, but, but I do think it'll show itself because the end of the episode ended with like her calling her therapist. So I think it'll show itself, but I'm kind of in the dark as to why it means that much to her. Mm. You know what, I need, that. that's a great uh, answer. I do need to say, these two men have been in long-term relationships. JD, as I mentioned, is a newlywed, he just got married. Kenny is in a long-term relationship. They're about to get married soon. Eventually. We discuss that, like, yeah, really, like, so it's coming. So they have history with this. They They understand or may understand how some women work and the dynamics between women and their friendships. But it's just very clear that, um, some men may operate a little differently. 
So Kenny, what's your advice for this Molly like character in your life? What would what advice would you give her right now seeing what you saw this episode? So first and foremost, I think it's it has a lot to do with her background as a lawyer and a background as a woman of color in a in a predominantly white culture. Mm. Where she doesn't want she's accustomed to not expressing herself, especially especially when it has to do with frustration because she doesn't want to be seen as the angry black woman, right? So I think that is has something to do with the fact that she is a poor communicator, which is ironic in that she's an attorney. Yeah. But at the same time, I think she's at that point, and JD was alluding to it, where this is her, she's butted heads before with Issa, and this is the first time that she's actually having a major, um, tip if you want to call it or yeah. uh disagreement with Issa, and so this is for sure the make or break and they're at that point where they're letting their pride get ahead of them and so someone needs to go first and they both feel like they've gone first if you've noticed the whole entire season they've only been putting uh themselves first and because Issa was so preoccupied with black party which again is ironic because Molly's a person that works 24 hours a day that she doesn't understand because she's not accustomed to things not being on her schedule. I can relate to that. I was an investment banker. Everything had to be on my schedule because I didn't have any free time. So I can relate to the, you know, and she, you saw it with Drew too. Like she um, had a moment where she had to go to work. Well, he came over, she had to work. She, she got into bed, he was sleeping. They had dinner another time and he was like, yo, everything's on your time. Like, I made plans because I just figured you're gonna work. So I think she needs to figure out what her priorities are. To JD's point again, she's 30. Like at this point, you have to you have to cut the bullshit and and sometimes it means trimming the fat. So maybe trimming the fat means Issa. Uh, I think unlikely because, you know, TV always works itself around like that. But, right. uh, and, and maybe maybe they, they take a season apart or something like that, but kind of like Lawrence is creeping back in. I'm sure if they take some time apart, Molly's gonna creep back into Issa's life too. Or she leaves because she has a new opportunity. She may have her own show. Who knows? I don't know. She has her own. She has a stand up. Do you think, as a viewer, though, that that that's interesting? Like what you just said is actually is freakishly spot on, right? I'm listening to you and I'm like, yo, this is gospel. But is that interesting to watch? You mean for them to deal with their? Yeah, story? like because no. I, I think I think it, it it's so it's so subconscious it's so in their head it's so much about their psychology at this point that I think it, it's taken away from the things I loved about those two characters so it, it's hard for me to give them the benefit of the doubt this this late after being a fan of the show does that make sense I hear you you know that I think that's also and, and I don't want to speak for the men, but it's great that y'all are here. I think men are having an issue with this season much more than women are because the thing that drew you guys into the season was like the earlier points, right? Where it was the relationship of Lawrence and Issa. You got a relationship, a perspective of the woman, you got a perspective of the yep. guy. You don't have that as much this nope. season. This season is much more focused on the female relationships and these things that these ladies are going through speak so much to women, right? Relation. This is literally how some of these relationships fall apart. It's pride. It's little moments of not understanding growth between two characters. So like, it's still fucking interesting to me because I've, I've dealt with, I, I mentioned this on the last episode, but I, I've, I feel like I've dealt with the Issa and Molly and I go back and forth every episode like, wait, am I Issa? Am I Molly? Like, which one am I? And I want to see how they resolve it because I can agree with Issa on some points and I can agree with Molly on others. That's deep. So it's still drawing me in. But Kenny, you seem to like this season. Jay, what do you need as a man to like this season? As a man? Um... What's missing so, from us? He's missing the sex scene. Nah, nah, the no, because I... It's because we only see men's asses. You know, I, I think the sex scenes are hella awkward, and we can get to the sex scene in this episode. Um, I think I think that the things that drew me in were Issa's quirks, right? Issa rapping in the in the mirror. Um, Issa just kind of more so being the awkward black girl. I like the sort of love triangle between her, Daniel, and, and Lawrence. It, it, it's not that that's my favorite storyline, but it's compelling, right? 
and and as a guy, you sort of choose a character to root for. Um, even though Lawrence got a lot of shit, there was he had very redeeming qualities. He was a decent guy, right? Um, and even Daniel, Daniel was a decent guy too. And I think I don't think anyone judged Issa for being in that situation. I think it was it was more so everyone was redemptive, so we kind of allowed it to play out. Um, so I don't have a character to root for necessarily this season, and it, I'm not getting like enough actual conflict. All of the conflict is so submerged and it's so it's so subtle that it's almost not enough for me to pay for me to pay attention in the episode where I'm we're not I'm 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 I'm, go, I'm gonna watch I'm gonna finish the season, but for me, um, I'm paying attention to like how it's edited and like the color palettes and like the other things that make the show beautiful, right? Um, Cause it's a beautifully done show, but I think the, the storyline this season isn't drawing me in as, as much in other seasons. You need conflict or some relationship strike. Is it cause Molly's too happy in her relationship and then Issa and Molly aren't fighting? Her? No, I don't know what Molly's problem is because she was complaining about work. Work is on the up and up. The episode where her and Issa were backing into the same spot, Issa had the hoop rod, Molly had the had the uh the, the, the beamer. Life is good. Her bill her bills are paid. I don't know where her beef is. I'm I'm not seeing her beef. You understand what I'm saying? I need to see the beef. The beef is that Issa used to always be available to her and now she's not. Just like what can okay. she's not she's not used okay. to that. Um, let's clear this up. Are you guys team Issa or team Molly this episode this season? I'm Team Lawrence. <laughs> yeah. I'm Team Lawrence. I'm gonna go ahead and forever and ever. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't. To JD's point, I don't have a vet, vested interest as to who to root for. I think they both fucked up, and I think they both can't communicate well, and I think they both use each other. Like that argument that they had at the end of, of the previous episode, I thought was funny because they were like, "Oh, like you just use people, yada yada yada." I'm like, "Y'all both do the same shit. It just..." It just happens to be convenient because when one person doesn't have that much drama, they can focus on the other person's drama. Now that they're both busy, it's like, all right, I need you. And the other person's like, yo, I need you. Who's gonna, who, like, there's no in between, apparently. And I think, I think that's probably why JD doesn't see the interest level there. He's focusing more on the, on the artistic side of it. Whereas for me, I could relate to it because I didn't have free time. So I could relate to both of them, but obviously see their faults in the, the fact that they're not communicating. Yeah. I'm team Issa. I don't think Issa's done any wrong. All right. This, you don't, <laughs> wait, you don't think she's done anything wrong? This season? No. This season or in general? This season. I haven't seen the wrong. In, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the moments where they come to a head, um, I, yeah. I find myself yeah. I what siding with Issa. Yeah. I can see how they both fucked up, but I would I would for sure say Molly's doing the most this season. Yes. 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 Not Issa's unavailable. Okay, all right. Whew, we can't get into this. Do we think Molly's issues, Molly's strife that she's having, do we think that that's going to interfere in her relationship with Asian Bay and then they're not going to last? I'm going to take a sip on this one. <laughs> you going to put it on me. No, 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 I got you. Gotcha. I need to, you know, get out of my thoughts real quick. Thoughts together, right? I don't think they're going to last for other reasons. I don't think it's the stressor of Issa. I think it's it's something I picked, on, picked up on. Maybe it's nothing. At the end of the like, ignoring everything that happened when they were in Mexico, when they come back and Lawrence was, they met up with Lawrence yep. at the airport. If you saw how, how Drew reacted, to seeing a tall, fit, handsome black guy, he was on some like, who the fuck is this kind of thing. Especially having that conflict in Mexico about um, about race. And those are the pitfalls of interracial, interracial relationships where, and that's why I took a drink, uh, where you're gonna have that inherent conflict because you're gonna have, especially being a person of color, you're gonna have these strong opinions. and. If you don't communicate well, you're not gonna last. And again, Molly doesn't communicate well. Drew doesn't communicate well. He's trying now, and he's trying to be understanding. But I think having a conflict between putting myself in Drew's position, your brother and your girl, that's that's a recipe for disaster. So he went to get the luggage, and Molly right. walked away to go get to speak right. to Lawrence. And so Drew was coming up behind her, like, what the fuck? That was that's very clear. It's wonder. I don't know. I feel like. I feel like 
Andy, Andrew um, lets a lot just go, which I think Molly's very strong personality, sometimes that's needed, but Molly also needs to be put in her place. Yeah. And I just wonder if Andrew can maintain that, right? There's but so much you can say. He almost broke with the the spending enough time together. Like he almost broke there. So will this be maintained? My prediction is Issa either gets back with Nathan or Lawrence because they set it up both. Nathan. And by the end of the season, you, so you think Nathan? Huh? Uh, I think also Nathan because I think it was gonna. What I think is going to happen is Lawrence is about to be like, yo, I thought about it, da 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 and then she's going to be like, well, I started dating someone. Correct. And it's going to be Nathan. And uh, I think it's going to be that, and then um, Andy and Molly are going to break up. And it's going to be awkward because then Molly and Issa are going to make up, but then Molly's going to have to see Nathan a lot because he's boys with Mm. You better write season five. Come on. Yo, you really thought about this, yo. Right? Yo, you really put time and effort into this because I'm being too harsh on them. You're being a lot more forgiving and like understanding of where they're coming from. I'm not, but everything you're saying is registering for sure. Right. But 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 I haven't been looking at it through that lens though. Man, this quarantine has me watching shows, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> I feel like I can write a show. I feel like I can write a show. So JD, do you think Molly and Andrew are gonna last? No. No? No. Why not? Kind of what you were saying before, like Andrew's too placated, right? He's uh he's he's entirely too passive. And that every even even Molly was dead wrong, right? With with Wilding on his brother. Molly was was dead wrong, right? Nah. We're not gonna do that. <laughs> nah. No, 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 no. Ready, ready. Molly was dead wrong for for saying fuck you to her man's brother. Fair, okay. fair, okay. fair. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Now, how she interpreted the situation is up for debate. My threshold for 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 that kind of shit is up here. So, I'm on vacation. I'm not ruining my vacation because Maria didn't want to give me towels, right? Why you scratch it? <laughs> it said it on her name tag. Oh, it did? Yeah, I, was, I thought you made it up. I, was like, I know, I, I was like... First you gotta zoom in, you gotta zoom. But I was like, 90% chance you got it right anyway. You gotta zoom, 90% chance. So I'm not ruining my vacation because someone doesn't want to give me towels, right? And I think my personality is, is, is more surrounded to like having that discourse. And at least now, if I'm 26, 27, I'm probably wowing like Molly did. Um, but I thought I thought she could have handled it differently. But talking to his brother like that to me was out of order, right? Out of order. If anyone, it doesn't matter what happens to say fuck you to my to my same mother, same father, brother. Like, right? You see what I'm saying? Like that's out of order. And the scene after that, he lets her sleep in. He's hella delicate. I wasn't feeling that. So I think. He's suffering from what she's suffering from a little bit, where he's just not saying anything anymore. Like he's letting her be who she is, and he and when she goes to therapy and works it out, and she writes her four page letter, um, he's gonna say it's over. I don't think it's gonna last, but that's just me. You should write for HBO too. <laughs> Both of y'all about the brain job, okay? Um, really quickly before we end this segment, we have seen in episodes past that. Um, Andrew has issues with his sister, who we now know her name is Fiona, so much so that his older brother and his sister-in-law are like, hey, give her a chance, but Andrew is like, nah. What do we think is the issue that he has? What's wrong with the sister? I'm gonna put my HBO writer hat on again. Come on, Princess. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it's because she is Molly-esque. Mm. And, and I, I say that uh, like because I wouldn't be surprised. Andrew has is his whole life. I'm assuming he's had it his way, and hasn't communicated. And is just like, all right, whatever. To me, that's a sign of somebody is super overbearing, super in your face, super opinionated. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's his sister, and they've gotten into arguments because of it. And I wouldn't be surprised if, when, if and when Molly meets his sister. She's gonna be like, I don't see what the issue is. And on top of that, I wouldn't be surprised too if that's the reason they break up. He sees them together, she's like, I don't see what the issue is. 
clicks to him that y'all are exactly the same person, and then they break up. All right, I'm gonna take my HBO Red hat off again. Son, that's amazing. Yo, you're watching shows with all eyes open, bro. Like, I'm not. <laughs> Janie's like, what's her name tag say? I'm not seeing any of that. Like, <laughs> Well, it's because you're, you're focused on the color schemes and, and you know, the shots that they... That they yeah, they I'm, I'm watching the wrong... I, yo, I, I was literally watching... There was a... So, the, the scene where uh, it's Molly and Andrew walking and then it's the brother along the sister. And they're doing this, like, cross-cut edit, which I've never seen before ever in film. And it was so jarring. And then I was just debating if it worked or not. And I kind of fucked with it. But this is what I'm paying attention to because... the. <laughs> Because the plot just wasn't dragging me in, but it, there's so much to learn from it still, right? Yeah. That's amazing. So this episode, we also saw Molly and Asian Bay go on their first vacation. So as two guys who are in very long-standing relationships, I know you guys have probably gone on some vacations with your women. I was going to say these women or other women, but I think it's probably in your best interest that you just talk about your um, fiance and your wife. So let's just stick to those two. And sorry for what I'm about to ask if it's detrimental. Um, so we know, like, we see the memes going around, like, have you ever gone on vacation and you realize that you would never go on vacation or never speak to that person again? These things come up on vacation that we never saw or never experienced with a friend or a significant other before. So guys, if you can go back to your first vacation with your wife and your fiance, can you let us know, whatever you think is safe to say, can you let us know something that you learned about this woman in your life that you only found out about on your vacation? That you can say on this camera. I got one. JD, take a sip. Why is JD just staring at me? <laughs> he always throws it just to you. <laughs> He's like, mm. uh, so one thing I realized, it was pretty early on. We ended up going to all places, Las Vegas. Uh, I found out in a good way and not okay. in a sexual way, because that a gentleman never tells. Uh, she's done for whatever. Um, and that was one of those things where I was just like, oh, dope. Like, one, she's a planner, uh, cause she had planned the entire like trip. And two, like, if we wanted to throw a little audible, she was down for whatever. Um, she was just more interested in having a good time. And that that's my vibe. So it was something that I thoroughly appreciated about her. Nice. How long had y'all been dating before you had that first vacation? Honestly, two months. Yeah, it was, it was- uh, Feel that. I feel like <laughs> Yeah, we just made the most of it. And it was it was something that were it was either gonna be I was gonna go with my boys or I was gonna go with her. And I much rather go with her, so I started going with you. Nice. Big ups to her for being down for that yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying, down for whatever. In a good way. Not bad. Yo, you know, um I'm not really trying to date nobody right now, but I get bored and lonely. Huh. So I've been swiping in quarantine, right? <laughs> so I started talking to this dude. Do you know, after two conversations, first of all, after the first conversation, he was like, do you want to talk, like, on the phone? And I was like, it's not that kind of party. Like, yeah. Little do you know, I'm not really trying to talk to you after this. But I was like, no, let's stay on text. Then he said, would you mind after quarantine if our first date was on a vacation? Like, if we went somewhere. I feel it. I was like, I was like, nigga, no. I feel it. it that's, nah, that's too much. Because that's too much. First date should either be dinner or if you've been talking enough, or something like coffee that's non-committal. Right. Listen, I don't think it's an awkward conversation, well. or you're getting catfished, or like, it's just not, like, there could be a creep or whatever, you just, you can just leave and it's not a big deal. So a vacation, you're kind of stuck. So, you yeah, know. Nah. That's such a- Jamie, would you do that? That's would such- you go on a vacation for a first date? Uh, no. Similar to, to Kenny, Tatiana and I's first vacation was like within two, three months. Um, and I think we went to go see my mom for real. Like we either went to go see my mom first in Florida or we went to DR first. And it was one of those like, we kind of, we still kind of young, a little broke, um, trying to do it on a budget. You know what I mean? We got there, it was on a budget. You know what I mean? It was a great time. It was a great, it was time, a great time, you know what I mean? He left the DR with the same girlfriend. That's a that's an accomplishment in itself. No, I, oh, I'm but like, I, I think I think one, one I think one of the things about traveling is uh, 
it's it's a good indicator of can you can you live with this person? Can you be with this person long term? Because uh, like he was saying, like Kenny was saying, uh, his wife was down for whatever, which is a is similar to my situation. Like Tatiana was a planner, she'll plan the whole thing, and then she'll be down for an audible. She'll be down to sleep for ten hours. She'll be down to sit by the pool for ten hours. Um, so I didn't have any horror story at all. Like mine was more of an indicator of like, all right, I could this could be a thing. Like we could take this serious for real, you know. Um, so I don't have any horror, I, and I don't think I've traveled with any other woman but her. I got hotels in the city for a night with a, a joint back in the day, but never, you know, they don't matter. never, uh, never, uh, you know, I, I never needed a passport. You know what I'm saying? She's, she's the, the perfect person to travel with. So I got lucky in that regard. Like we haven't had, and, and it, like you said, quarantine, we've had zero fights. Hope she's not listening to zero fights. You know what I'm saying? All quarantine. Quarantine has been great. For real, it's been, it's been like way better than I thought anyone would have anticipated because you would think you're in the same place you would get into like a lot of little fights here and yeah. there, but it's been, it's been great. Yeah. But in my mind, if you can work during quarantine, you can work anytime. That's real. I, I always say how thankful I am to not have to do that. And I mean, I have a decent size apartment, but like, I can't even imagine the people like, let's say March was your first month living with this person like mm. can you imagine that nope. i'm glad to hear that i'm glad to hear there's like no not horror stories but even like things that you're finding out about her that you're like oh didn't know before bed she picks her toes or like some you know some like crazy shit like that i don't know where that came from i just threw it out there like that but like <laughs> you never know people are fucking weird <laughs> for real but two months into the relationship like that vacation in yeah. Vegas? I mean, look, it worked for y'all, so I guess if there's if there's moments, this is it. Can can I say YOLO? You can say whatever you want with your little accent too. YOLO, come on. Yeah, <laughs> <y'all> stop it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, guys. So another thing that we saw JD had hinted in this or on this earlier. I don't really want to dive too deep into it. Um, but there's a lot of controversy on the internet right now as to whether Molly overreacted in the situation, whether it be about the towel, whether it be about the um, saying fuck you to the brother, her conversations with race, all of that. This ain't really the time to do that and surely this climate is not the time to have that conversation. So I don't really give a fuck what you think. Um, go ahead, Molly. Anyway. But I do want to get into, this really actually has nothing to do with the episode, but I do want to get into the dynamics of um, a black woman date, or I'll say a woman, no, nah, it's a black woman dating a black man. So guys, you probably have experienced this in the past, right? And we know there are many memes going around where you're on a date with your boyfriend and the food comes back, he gets his plate and he tells you it's a little cold. And the first thing we do is, excuse me, excuse me, his food is cold. This is not what he asked for. You gave him the wrong thing, right? We have that tendency to support our man to a level that maybe they would not have. And I don't even want, I, I don't even know. I feel like, should I get into the details as to why maybe in this climate I will? It's because we consider you guys to be kings, right? So when somebody treats you like less than that, we want to stand up for you guys. Even in moments where you feel like you would not have said that, we're like, nah, don't treat our king that way. Let me tell you how he should be treated. He wants potatoes with cheese and bacon, not just with the cheese. Go take that shit back. His steak is cold, it's not cooked correctly, take that shit back. We will come in with the quickness. So guys, can you give an example of a time where a girlfriend, a mom, a female friend, Someone whose other has come in and supported you in a moment where you're like, wait a minute, I wouldn't have done that. I see where you're going. I appreciate it. But whoa. And JD is pouring yet another drink. So either we're going to throw right to Kenny or this is about to be some shit. Nah, nah, nah. I, 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 I'll take it first. Um, listen, I mean, that was beautiful, right? I, I, I don't know. I mean... I don't know if the women who've done it for me think think it's because I'm a king. I, that that's news. So you know that's they they do. They you, do. I just thought it was. I just thought every black woman was a black belt in Six Sigma, and they're uh, they're just all about max efficiency. 
and it, it's been more their like default positioning than like me being royalty, but. But look, look, let me, not for real though, because it's, I think, and this is about, I, I don't even want to get this deep into the whole king and like cheating. I honestly think, and we can take this how we want, maybe in the comments or have this moment. I think you guys have gone through society so much knowing like, we're going to get treated however people want to treat us. And that shit is natural to them. You guys have had that happen to you on so many times, whether it be a white person being racist, a white woman, a, you know, something that happens at the job, something that happens in your life, fucking on the train, you know, it can be anywhere. I think that happens so often to you guys that when something, something else happens that you're just like, I'm not even going to say anything because one, this happens so often, but two, I know if I do say something, I'm going to be perceived as like an angry black man or it's going to come back into be my fault, right? Whereas women are like, nah, you don't get to do that to my guy. I know you're not going to say anything, but let me tell you why I'm going to step in for it. He deserves this. He's worthy of this. You are like head of household, whatever you guys think about that. You're like head of household in their life. You're a protector. So when somebody else is putting you in a lower place than you should be placed, especially in our eyes, but surely in their eyes, then we want to step in and protect you. All right. Or like stand up for you a little more. I feel that. I feel that. I feel like it, 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 it more rears its head uh, around like in, in customer service situations. So like that's why that's why the, the the restaurant example is so good because it's more like those are the situations that it happens more frequently like uh you know if, if it's a, a server being disrespectful or we're getting bad service someplace or if we pay for something if we spent money for x and x was not provided and my mindset is like ah it's no big deal like she's not letting it go down like we are gonna fix this now you know what i'm saying or like if yeah. I say, like it could be as small as me ordering like a pair of kicks. I wear a 13, they send a 12, and I'm like, ah, I'll just give the 12 to my cousin. Nah, we getting a 13, bro. Like we getting it. You know what I'm saying? Like and she calling in. She like She's going in. Like she's you know, she's going through all the receipts, you know what I'm saying? All the all the order numbers, all the customer service. So I, I'm I'm not doing that. So for me, I don't think of it as protective, but you know, but there are moments where someone's out of pocket and her her position is like, yo, like so for me, I'll be the one to like prevent it from escalating and bringing attention to ourselves. But she's definitely very protective. And I think people, I think people in general, I think are protective of those they love and like even more so for others than themselves, right? Like it'll be easier for me um, to, to, to defend or jump in front of something for someone else than myself. And I think, I think as a black man, I think I think you you know you you, you kind of touched on a little bit with the with the with the Molly altercation with uh, the uh, towel girl, and I think in that situation, right? Like, let's say it was it was a man that had that altercation, right? I could see a woman stepping in and getting that towel. You understand? Yeah. But for me, I would have kind of just been like, all right, let me just get my key card or like not blow it up because I'm just positioned I'm just positioned to 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 de-escalate constantly. I'm constantly interpreting someone else's bias and I'm constantly figuring out how to navigate that where it's so it, it it's such a survival tool it's like it's not even second it's first nature it's, it's my default positioning uh which is good or bad right it's more it's, it's it's Darwinism at this point right where I feel like had my wife seen that she's not letting it slide no give him his time yeah. you understand why do you think that de-escalation happens is it just like do you think that there's any like Racial? Do you think there's any kind of like how society would view you? Or yeah, you're of just course. Naturally, course. like I don't need to deal with that. Absolutely. I mean, I think. Listen, I'm I'm six five to two two twenty, right? So for me, I'm a big human. So I all there, there's already a um, there's already a size factor when talking to women I don't know, when talking to other men I don't know, and I I, I have to be aware of of, of uh, how my behaviors being interpreted now this isn't saying it's right this has been more like things you like that my elders have told me like to navigate corporate america right like you know bruh like listen you can't do what everyone else can do this is just what it is right um and then in my personal life you know i try to find a common ground with someone first however different this person is what, what's our common ground and let's just build on that yeah and i think only people of color have to think like this 
this is not a thing that white people have to think about. This is a thing that only people of color have to think about constantly, is how I'm being perceived. Um, so so seeing that, seeing the Molly moment, it was interesting because it was like, in my in, in my head, it, in, 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 just with all that's happened in the last four days, it's like, yo, you could that didn't have to blow up, right? But she wasn't wrong for blowing up. She, you know, you know what I'm saying? She, she she's allowed to feel like that. And I think had that been me, and I tried to de-escalate it, I do think my wife would have stepped in. Like, nah, we're not gonna like go give us the towel. Like, the towel is ours. We don't need to show you no card. Give us the towel. That's what it is. Um, so I just think I think women are women are less. I think women are are stronger than men in this instance. Honestly, like they're less afraid to step in. Like, I'll give you an actual example. I won't tell y'all where I live, but right out here on this block right here, we're walking by and this dude is like yoking up this girl, like yoking her up, right? And my, my wife is like, yo, get off of that girl, right? Like, just screaming. And I'm like, yo, don't get us killed out here. Right, right, right. Because if he's crazy enough yo. to hit a girl in broad daylight, He'll shoot me. You understand? Right. But she's not even doing that arithmetic, right? She's not even doing that algebra. She's going right to, yo, know, wrong is a wrong. We don't care what it is. And I think black women carry that a little bit more than black men. Black men are doing the, what's the repercussion um, mm -hmm. when oftentimes, like, you just have to react and, and, right, and, that, and that reaction, sometimes it's the right reaction. So I think I think there's a, a difference in, in that regard. Um, just from just by the nature of the species, right? Like a man will punch a man in the face, and I think men are conditioned to think that like, I could get punched in my face, right? Because men just even as playing as kids, we're just rough, we're a little bit, you know, rambunctious and violent. Where women, not as much. So they see injustice, they're not thinking, they're going right to the problem. You feel what I'm saying? And I wish I had more of that, and I wish I didn't think as much, because I'm thinking long term, like, all right, I go over there, he slices my face, now I'm in the hospital, do I have the, the, the low deductible or high deductible plan, how much I gotta pay out of pocket? <laughs> like, I'm doing all the forecasting of the situation, right? Pulling out the couch. Can I afford like... the plastic surgeon? Is my shit going keloid? Like, I'm doing all the math, right? Um, but like women are going straight to the source of the problem. And like her mom is like that. Her grandmother is like that. Her grandmother ran down on this dude last week. And I'm like, yo, like you might've got shots. Like I don't care nothing about that, right? So I, I think it's just their programming. Of we're going to the source of the problem and we're not worried about what the what, what, what's coming after, which I think is like, I, I just I just think it's just, it's, just, it's just in them. You feel what I'm saying? So that was long winded, but you know. No, it was great. I mean, it comes down to protection, like that the natural instinct is to protect by any means necessary. <laughs> also, yeah, the repercussions for us saying things aren't as much, aren't as bad for you guys saying things. Yeah. Kenny, what you got? What you got, boo? I mean, there's not much to say. Right? After, <laughs> Come after. on, came to JD's TED Talk. I'll keep it, I'll keep it short. I agree 100%. I think a lot of that has to do with if you think about the privilege structure, it's white men, white women, black men, black women. So women, black women have a double knock. So it's almost like, what do I have to lose? Whereas for us, yeah, there's that physical aspect of it or of, yeah, he might, he might try to fight me or like you said, slice me in the face. Um, with, where with black women, it's almost like, what do I have to lose? Like. I'm so accustomed to having my back against the wall. I see something wrong going on. I don't have anything to fall back on. I'm just gonna go and, and try to make right what's yeah. wrong. I also think that's that motherly aspect to it as well, whether it's a significant other, a child, a relative, a friend. Women have, and you know, bless them for it, this protective nature to themselves that uh, I admire, but at the same time, like, it, it everything in excess can yeah. be bad. So um, it's one of those things where I remember my anecdotal uh, experiences. I was in DC. This was probably like a year after me and my, um, my now fiance started dating. And I was at a bar. Um, we were, I was the only guy, it was me with uh, 
three of her friends and I went to the bar and she heard somebody uh, call me a nigga and it was some white guy, some Southern white guy. And I didn't hear it. And so I turned around cause there's like commotion and she's like in this guy's face, like no regard. Mind you, the guy's bigger than me. And I'm, I'm not, I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm not big from a, a, a height perspective, but I'm not a small guy. I'm uh, 5'10", 205, right? Or 200. So let me some of that height cause yeah, it's rough. But um, <laughs> it was it was one of those where you know my immediate reaction was yo she's in this guy's face I'm not saying she doesn't have a reason but I'm immediately thinking of, I gotta fight him. all right if this guy, right. if this escalates I see he's right. with four dudes right. and I'm only got right. here so I immediately grab her ask questions later, and then she didn't want to tell me what it was because she knew also knew um, that if someone disrespected me to that level then I might say something so yeah. it's it, it's that. You know her willing to put herself um out there regardless of what the the consequences were to protect me which i thoroughly appreciated but at the same time having the wherewithal to then say okay kenny might black out if i tell him what he said so let me let me like not escalate the situation once i calm down a bit so it's what it, it's it's a fine line and it's it, it's honestly like I would say one of the gifts of being a person of color and, and, and not having that privilege that you you are hyper aware of when an, an injustice or something wrong is going on that you speak up. But at the same time, it, it, it has to do a lot with the burden that you carry. Uh, and again, in the environment that we're in, you know, this last weekend, you know, a lot of shit went down in this country. And I think it, it, it just makes everyone that much more aware of, of the injustices that go on. And I think women are... As you can see, and not to get political, as you can see in in, in elections, women are, are the, the bellwether, of, in my mind, of what is the right side of, uh, of morality. All right, guys, so as we do every episode, the guests from the last episode left you guys a question. So let's throw to it. Okay, ladies, so every episode, you guys get to come up with a question for the next guest. And I'm giving you a little baby hint there. Because I did not say that the next group of ladies. Ooh. Aha. So what do you ladies think? Get my Birdman hands on. Um, Birdman hair up. So I'm, I'm wondering if maybe you would want to ask more about like the, um, I forgot the technical term for it, but not the main cast, but the secondary cast, I'll call it. I'm also thinking about, um, just like how the guys are like the secondary, but they're hearing all of the commentary that's coming from the friendship. So for instance, like Nathan knows what's going on between Molly and Issa. Mm. Um, Asian Bay is hearing everything from Molly's side, but seeing how Molly is acting out. And I kind of, I'm interested to know, like what do guys think when they get to see their counterparts or what do girls think when they get to see their counterparts interact with their friends you know what I mean or while all of this stuff is happening like what's going through your mind I like the dude one like the dude characters have been very prominent even though they're not the they're driving the story a little bit right yeah like, if there was no Nathan, like, even... there's no Andrew there's no fight or there's a later fight so I think like even when you think about where the camera shoot where the camera goes when Molly is telling Issa no when Issa is telling Ma Molly like if something happens between you and him it's not gonna be what she said if something happens between you and him, oh Linka yes you digging it girl and I said that last episode I cut it out because it didn't fit but yes. And the camera went right on his face. So what I took from that, this is totally veering off, not even the camera angles, but what I took is that Molly may look at him because it made it seem like Andrew wasn't for Molly, like he wasn't on her team. Because he was like, oh, don't do this now. And Issa turns and looks at Andrew and goes, see, look at him, even he's telling you. So she's like putting it on Andrew. So I wonder if Molly and Andrew are gonna have beef because it's, it almost, Molly must have maybe felt like Andrew wasn't on her side in that moment. But I'm also thinking. Okay, she don't agree. Mm, I'm also thinking. I'm gonna head out. 
No, stay. Stay on the couch. Stay here on the couch. Um, I'm also thinking just about perspective, right? Like more, less about what the characters are thinking, but more on just like us as people, right? When we are involved in a friendship, you know, issue, does that make us look at the person differently, you know? Okay, that was amazing, Olenka and Stephanie. Took us a little massaging to get there, but I think the overall question is, how does a man feel when they see their partner, their significant other, going through a riff or like a little tip that they're having with someone so close to them? Does that affect you guys in a negative way? Does that make you look at the person differently? Uh, <laughs> I see you looking at me. Uh, all right, so I guess it's my turn. Um, for me, uh, a lot of times, and I'm gonna take the perspective of if uh, my fiance Albo is having this tip. Um, I try to feel what she's feeling so I can understand her reaction, first and foremost. And then really try to get to what the root of the issue is. Um, and I try to be objective because if she just wanted someone to I can sometimes tell when she just wants someone to just listen to her as opposed to give advice. And if it's the latter, I try to be objective and, and play devil's advocate. Just to give her a different perspective. And topical because Andrew's brother was playing devil's advocate the entire time. Right. But uh, yeah, I, I think that's the, the route I try to take. I try to understand the emotions and the reason behind the emotions. And not necessarily just situational awareness, but also what about her or anyone in that matter that led them to have that reaction or say what they said or anything like that to try to get a fuller picture as opposed to just saying this moment in time as an isolated incident. So that, that's the perspective I try to take. It doesn't necessarily always work. Obviously, you also don't know all the details of that relationship and you just try to be there for them. I think whenever anyone's going through something with someone that's close to them, it's it's a tough situation. So the more you can just be there as a sounding board or just a struggle to lean on, the better. I like it. Has there ever, and Jamie, I'm gonna get to you too. Has there ever been, um, for Kenny, has there ever been a time where you like, you your girl was wrong, like blatantly wrong. Never. You had to call her out. <laughs> Yo, my bitch said never. Right. <laughs> you trying to get me in trouble, nope. Nope. No. You. Stop you it. Like, oh, friend. Never. No. Okay. That's Ken. JD. I thought it was JD. He'd be like, look, I told her she was wrong yesterday. What you want me to do? <laughs> no, but, but you know what? Like, I would never be like, yo, yo, blah, 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 stop. Because uh, I think that, that just asks for further escalation of the situation. So I'd rather be like, I see where you're coming from and the emotions behind it. But like, try to take a step back and look at it from their perspective. Um, to try to defuse whatever situation. But again, my fiance is never wrong, so that's not, that's, that's right. Not <laughs> Got it. Just, you know, should that ever, hypothetically. Now, JD. Yo. Happy wife, happy life. Yo, yo, me, me and Kenny, not even the same species, because words <laughs> like, I see where you're coming from, and I understand your emotions. That shit is not even in my vocab, for real. Like, <laughs> Um, nah, I mean, no, nah, that's actually very factual. Um, <laughs> we know. Not, a, yo, not until, not until, uh, not until I started, um, acting and, uh, writing and, and directing, like, uh, and diving into the art, did I even consider emotions as valuable, right? So, pre that, um, my mindset was like, I don't care how you feel. Here's the objective logic of the situation. Um, and here, and, and I only want to hear about this maybe twice. I don't want to hear about this beef with your friend for six months. Right? I have a very short um, window of, of, of latitude for the same conversation for a, a fiscal six months, right? Um, but as I've matured and had to like dive into like studying and character and 
these things are really important. And I think acting has helped um, my relationship because I've been much more empathetic and like understanding that like emotions actually matter, right? So um, when I when when my wife does have an issue with a friend, it's kind of interesting. So if it's you know she, she she's pretty pretty rational uh, in general, so. Um, she can kind of rationalize the situation. Um, but then when I see her being hyper rational with her friends and hyper irrational with me, I'm that much more upset because I see she has the power and ability to be super rational and we need to apply that at all times. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Did you, yo, have you ever uh, heard that Chris Rock stand up where he's all, where he talks about like uh, relationships uh, and I hope my fiance doesn't listen to me. I've told her this before and she hates it. But how men are inherently handicapped when it comes to arguments with their significant others. Fact. We have, uh, it's necessary for us to have logic and women go for distance and irritation. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. This, this an irrit- Yo, that's a bad- I remember that vividly, yo. You know, let's, let's pretend I never said that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Only now do I understand that how people feel actually matters, right? Like, I'm only understanding that shit now. And I say that laughing, but I'm dead serious. Like, you know, we, we, we sort of live in a vacuum, the vacuum of like, our own bodies, our own frame, our own perspective, our own uh, our own psychology, our own childhood that shaped our psychology as adults, right? We only know that and we're, we're so aware, like our awareness is so high that we're obsessed with our perspective. Um, and in talking with other people, you can see how vastly different people are and how your 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 old testament like the foundation of who you are as a person another person can't even understand and like it take it, it takes a while to get to that point to like let them to, to, to even accept the fact that this is real like we're different and we don't see things the same way and i think as a, as a as a man i think or let me not say as a man my temperament is let's solve this problem right you have a problem and my goal is to help you to help offer advice that helps you not think of this as a problem. But sometimes people don't want to solve their problems. They just want to vent and get that shit off their chest. And that's yeah. that. And even that took a long time to understand. Cause I'm like, that's not even productive. But but I understand it's 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 just necessary and everybody's different. I mean, this is shit I'm learning at like, you know, 33. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't I didn't even believe this was even true or real until until recent. So, you know. From an entertainment perspective, watching watching all of the men hear their women talk about their problems, um, it's not entertaining. <laughs> and, and, and because I because even in real life it's not entertaining. Um, but I do think it's I do think it's valuable because it is an authentic representation of life. It it allows men as viewers to get in to, to get further inside the minds of women, um, and, it, and and it just sort of like adds context, right? Because if you're only dealing with the person that you're with, you might not have context. And I think it just helps you realize, like, oh wow, like this is you know this is a common. I'm the weird one, right? I'm the one. I'm the one who's weird. I'm the one who's who's uh, who's not up on how people actually feel. So I think it does help in that regard. Um, but like I said, you know, two conversations max, and that shit better be fucking resolved. Other than that, take that shit to grandma because I don't want to hear it. I'm done. <laughs> I, I, I will say, I will say that what I've realized, and, and what I was saying earlier, like I was just being facetious, but I think that the the bigger point is that emotion is just a physical manifestation of where you've been and, and the shoes you've walked in and to understand someone's emotive response is to is to better understand who they are and how they've been shaped by what their experiences are and so so long as you get them to recognize that that that's the emotive response that they have and also see 
and, and I, I try to like use this at all times too, see the emotive response. And it's easier said than done, obviously, and, and easier done when you're on the outside looking in. But seeing the emotive response that someone else also gives you helps you to find some sort of common ground and see like, you know, what you were expecting in terms of, of a reaction, you may have not, you may not have gotten there, but the re the the action that the other person gave you, considering where they started from, may have been just as far, if not further, uh, going in your direction. So like, if you're in an argument and you're expecting it to go 50-50, but given the fact that they've, you know, let's say never had someone be there for them or they just have a lack of trust in people, them going 20% is equivalent to you going 80%. So you need to like, that helps any relationship really for you to really understand how people are. Um, and again, that emotive response is, is just a signal as to who they are in the shoes they've walked in. Yo, bruh. What books you reading? Right? I was like, this nigga went to therapy for sure. Uh, yo, no, so yo, you've been to all the therapies, bro. Like, what's He up? is the therapist. We ain't no even, we ain't even get to this with my therapist. This ain't even on our on our schedule, bro. <laughs> yo, no lie, I've read zero books. I've been to zero therapies. Nah. I, just, I, I like to talk to people. I'm not like having it. I'm not having I'm not, I'm not saying you're not telling the truth, but I'm just not having it. He's been here before. This it is could be the liquor. I, Guys, this was great. I love the fact that this episode, in this time, in this climate, everything that's going on today, actually included two black men, Afro-Latino, uh, what do you call yourself, Caribbean-American, two black men on this episode to have this conversation, and especially one about an episode that included so much about race and a time and questions that include so much about race. So I hope you guys actually had fun in here, but I really loved it in this engaging conversation. I feel like I'm gonna edit this, but I don't wanna chop any of this shit down because it was that good. So stay tuned for my vouch um, coming to theaters because this shit's about to be an hour and a half. Thanks for joining me, guys. Okay, y'all don't wave, I guess, guys. Can you uh, give cheers or some shit? What the fuck you gotta give them the triple pump. The triple pump is like, you know what I mean? It's COVID friendly. I'm, I'm done. Bye. We're done. Quarantine, I'll give you the elbow. Oh, the elbow. You know I mean? Oh, the elbow. The elbow. Yeah. It's, a, it's a